Imagine standing on a pitcher's mound, the crowd silent, the world watching, as you grip the baseball tightly in your hand. The sun beats down, your heart pounds, and you prepare for the most important throw of your life. Every muscle in your body tenses as you wind up, focusing all your energy into this single, perfect moment. Now picture this. What if you could throw that ball so hard with such unimaginable force that it didn't just fly across the field but actually soared up through the clouds, broke free from the atmosphere, and traveled thousands of miles, maybe even landing on another continent? It sounds impossible, right? But in the world of science and engineering, this is more than just a wild dream. That's the basic idea behind a ballistic missile, a machine designed to make the ultimate throw, not with a baseball, but with technology and raw power. It's the ultimate throw, where physics, engineering, and sheer power come together in a spectacular display. The roar of engines, the blaze of fire, and the rush of speed all combine to launch these machines skyward. To make this possible, we have to harness the same forces that shape our universe. Gravity, momentum, and atmospheric drag. These are the invisible hands that guide not just baseballs, but also planets in their orbits and satellites as they circle the Earth. Understanding these forces is key to mastering the art of the ultimate throw. A ballistic missile gets one massive push at the start, a burst of energy so powerful it propels the missile high above the clouds. After that, it doesn't keep firing its engines. Instead, it coasts silently, following a carefully calculated arc guided only by gravity and the momentum from its initial launch. It's a delicate balance, a dance between speed and the pull of the Earth. Think of it as a cosmic game of catch, but with stakes that are incredibly high. The missile arcs across the globe, connecting distant continents in minutes, demonstrating both the reach and the risks of this technology. In this chapter, we'll break down exactly how these incredible machines launch from the ground, coast through the edge of space, and then re-enter the atmosphere at breathtaking speeds. Each stage is a marvel of science and engineering, requiring precision and ingenuity, this isn't just science fiction or something out of a movie. Ballistic flight is a real phenomenon that shapes our world every day. From the tense strategies of global politics to the peaceful exploration of space, the principles behind the ultimate throw have far-reaching impacts. By the end of this journey, you'll have a deeper understanding of the science, the technology, and the human ingenuity that make these incredible flights possible. So get ready to explore the secrets behind the ultimate throw. Let's get started. When you hear the term ballistic missile, you might picture a dramatic rocket launch, a column of fire and smoke shooting skyward. But what exactly makes a missile ballistic, and how is it different from other types of missiles or rockets? The answer actually starts with language. The word ballistic comes from the ancient Greek word balain, which means to throw. This simple idea, throwing something, lies at the heart of how ballistic missiles work. A ballistic missile is a weapon that is only actively guided during its initial powered phase of flight. In other words, it gets a powerful push at the start, much like a stone launched from a catapult or a cannonball fired from a cannon. After that initial boost, the missile is left to follow a high arcing path through the sky, shaped entirely by gravity and the momentum it gained during launch. It's like a giant version of tossing a ball across a field. Think of it this way. When you throw a stone, you control its direction and speed only while it's in your hand. Once it leaves your grip, gravity takes over, pulling it down in a curved path. The same principle applies to ballistic missiles, just on a much larger and more powerful scale. This is very different from cruise missiles, which are more like pilotless airplanes. Cruise missiles use engines to fly low and straight, adjusting their path as they go. Ballistic missiles, on the other hand, get one massive push at the start, then coast through the upper atmosphere or even space, following a predetermined arc. This method of flight is incredibly efficient for covering vast distances. Ballistic missiles can travel thousands of kilometers, crossing entire continents or even oceans in less than an hour. Their speed and range make them powerful tools for military strategy. In simple terms, a ballistic missile is a fire-and-forget weapon on a global scale. Once it's launched and its course is set, there's no need for further guidance or control. The missile is on its own, racing toward its target. 
The initial boost phase is crucial, as it determines the missile's path. After that, gravity becomes the only pilot, guiding the missile along its arc until it reaches its destination. Understanding this basic concept is the first step to grasping how these remarkable machines operate and why they play such a significant role in modern defense and geopolitics. The journey begins with the boost phase, a short, powerful leap that sets the entire mission in motion. In these first few moments, the missile's fate is decided. The ground shakes as the engines roar to life, unleashing a torrent of energy that propels the missile skyward. This is the most dramatic and visually stunning part of the flight, where raw power overcomes the pull of gravity and the resistance of the thick lower atmosphere. Rocket engines ignite with a thunderous force, fighting gravity and atmospheric drag to push the missile higher and higher. The exhaust plumes blaze bright against the sky, marking the missile's relentless climb. Every second counts, as the engines burn through tons of fuel, converting chemical energy into the kinetic force needed to escape Earth's grip. Most missiles use multiple stages, each one a marvel of engineering. As each stage burns out, it drops away, making the missile lighter and allowing the next stage to ignite. This process is crucial. By shedding dead weight, the missile becomes more efficient, accelerating faster with each separation. The transition between stages is a delicate ballet, timed to perfection. With every stage separation, the missile surges forward, reaching astonishing speeds, eventually exceeding 25,000 kilometers per hour. At these velocities, the missile can break the sound barrier many times over, slicing through the upper atmosphere in mere minutes. During the boost phase, the guidance system is working overtime. Tiny computers and sensors inside the missile make constant split-second adjustments, ensuring the missile stays on its precise path. Even the smallest deviation now could mean missing the target by hundreds of kilometers later. This is the only time the missile can steer itself. After this, it's largely at the mercy of physics. Any error introduced here is magnified over the missile's long journey, so accuracy is everything. Operators on the ground monitor every detail, ready to intervene if something goes wrong. The ultimate goal of the boost phase is to deliver the payload to the perfect altitude and velocity, setting it on the right arc for its coast through space. The missile must reach a delicate balance, high enough to escape the atmosphere, fast enough to follow its intended path, but not so fast that it overshoots its target. By the end of the boost phase, the missile has shed its heavy boosters and is now traveling at hypersonic speeds, gliding above the atmosphere. The boosters fall away, tumbling back to Earth, their job complete. The hard work is done. The Great Coast is about to begin. Now, gravity takes over, guiding the missile silently along its arc above the curve of the Earth. The boost phase may be brief, but it's the foundation for everything that follows. After the boost comes the long, silent mid-course phase. The engines are off, the payload coasts on pure momentum, following a predictable arc high above Earth. For ICBMs, this arc can reach over 1,200 kilometers, higher than the International Space Station. With almost no air resistance, the missile covers vast distances efficiently. Some missiles release decoys or use tiny thrusters to confuse defenses or improve accuracy. The missile reaches its highest point or apogee halfway through the journey. Gravity then pulls it back toward Earth for the final plunge. The mid-course phase is a pure demonstration of physics, an unpowered object arcing through space. The quiet coast is nearly over, the dramatic finale is next. The terminal phase begins as the re-entry vehicle slams back into the atmosphere. Friction creates intense heat, making the RV glow like a man-made meteor. Traveling at hypersonic speeds, the RV must survive temperatures hotter than the sun's surface. Special heat shields protect the payload, burning away to carry heat off. Some advanced RVs use fins or thrusters to dodge defenses and improve accuracy. At a set altitude, the warhead detonates, either in the air or on impact. The entire journey, from launch to detonation, can take just 30-40 minutes. It's a fiery, precise conclusion to a journey that began with a single, powerful boost. Not all ballistic missiles are the same, there's a whole family, each for different jobs. Short-range ballistic missiles SRBMs, travel less than 1,000 kilometers and are used on the battlefield. Examples include Russia's Iskander and the infamous Scud. SRBMs are quick, hard to intercept, and act like long-range artillery. Medium-range ballistic missiles MRBMs, reach 1,000-3,000 kilometers, threatening entire regions. 
MRBMs like Iran's Shahab-3 or China's DF-21 can strike deep into enemy territory. They bridge the gap between tactical and strategic weapons. Each step up in range increases a nation's ability to project power. These categories shape military strategy and international relations. Now for the heavyweights, Intermediate Range Ballistic Missiles IRBMs, and Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBMs. IRBMs travel 3,000-5,500 kilometers, crossing continents and targeting high-value sites. Their deployment has sparked major international tensions like the Cold War standoff that led to the INF Treaty. ICBMs exceed 5,500 kilometers able to strike across the globe in about 30 minutes. These are the backbone of nuclear deterrence for countries like the US, Russia, and China. ICBMs are housed in silos or on mobile launchers for survivability. Many carry multiple warheads, MIRVs, each targeting a different site. The speed, range, and destructive power of ICBMs have shaped global politics for decades. They embody the concept of mutually assured destruction. Why are ballistic missiles such a big deal? They're central to military strategy and national security. For nuclear-armed nations, ICBMs are the ultimate deterrent, ensuring any attack can be met with devastating retaliation. Their speed and reach force nations to think twice before starting conflicts. The existence of these missiles has created a tense balance, mutually assured destruction. But as more countries acquire them, global instability rises and arms races begin. Missile defense systems try to intercept these weapons, but it's a massive technological challenge. The race between offense and defense is constant and costly. Building ballistic missiles requires advanced science and engineering, skills that also enable space exploration. That's why missile technology is tightly regulated worldwide. Ballistic missile technology and space exploration are two sides of the same coin. The rockets that launched the first ICBMs also sent the first satellites and humans into space. Multi-stage propulsion, guidance, and re-entry tech are shared by both fields. The US Explorer 1 and Soviet Sputnik satellites rode on modified ballistic missiles. Today, companies like SpaceX use evolved missile tech for reusable rockets. The same science that created weapons of war also lets us explore the cosmos. Science and technology are tools, their impact depends on how we use them. From the ultimate throw to the ultimate journey, rocketry continues to shape our world.